Hello and welcome to a short Unity tutorial on conveyor belts. My name is Jay and I'm going to be showing you how I set this up. I wanted to make a follow-up video to a Unity tutorial I made on conveyor belts in the past, but this time using the physics system to add force to the objects on it rather than using the velocity. So that should hopefully fix some issues that people were having with the previous one. I'm just going to take this one and move it to the side to go over how it's set up. So the basic idea is that on this one, we have a couple parts to it. There's the main base, which is the red and the black parts on it. The conveyor belt is where most of the actual action is happening, but it also does have two invisible walls on it just to make sure the things that are landing on it are trying to stay on it a little better than if they didn't have walls. So on the conveyor part, we're going to see that the material on it moves by changing the offset on the Y for the material. And you could see in the game preview that the rest of them are also changing at the same time. I'll show you how I could separate those through the code. I'm going to set that back to zero. And then also, we have this conveyor belt script. That's where all of the magic happens. Opening up that, we see that we have a couple variables at the top. They are all private, so that way other classes can't see them, but they are serialized, so we could still edit them in the inspector. First, we have speed, and we have conveyor speed. There's also direction as a vector three, and then there's also a list of game objects called on belt. The last one we have is a material called material. The material being set to the material of our mesh renderer is going to make a material instance. So that way, if we have it during the play mode, we'll be able to see that this object here, let's just say I change this conveyor speed to something different than the rest. Let's say 0 0.01. This will, should be 25 times slower than the rest of them. We can see that this one in the back is moving extremely slowly where the rest are moving a lot faster. If we didn't do that inside of our script here, they would all be moving at the same speed no matter what. So in order to make that actually move, that's where this update line comes in. We are getting the material from our mesh renderer and then we're changing the main texture offset. That's going to be our X and our Y. So that's why we're using a vector two here. Now, since all of my materials are only using the Y vector, which I can show you inside of Blender here, we have the actual conveyor belt set up here, and we see that my texture is set up vertically. So if I grab this texture, I can move it around, but if I lock this to the Y value and move it up, we see that the values are moving the belt forward by moving this up. So that's why my values are set to that. You might need to set it to something else. But then we're also multiplying that by the conveyor speed. This is separate from the normal speed of the objects on the belt, since we might want those moving faster than what our visual is. But the last part is we want to make sure we are multiplying this by time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent. If somebody's computer is rendering this at 200 frames a second and somebody else's is rendering it at 60, they should look the same. If we didn't do this, the one that's running 200 frames a second would be much faster. The magic really happens down here after the fixed update. We'll come back to that but on collision enter. So once an object collides with this conveyor belt, it gets added to that on belt list. Then inside a fixed update, as long as there's an object inside of that list, we see that the only thing it's doing is adding force to it. And that force is using a speed and a direction. And that's being set per conveyor belt. We could make them different. I made them all the same, but they could be different. And then the last thing is that if you exit the collision, just remove it from the on belt list. So if I go back here to Unity, I'm just going to set this back inside of here. There we go. And we see that these balls are just spawning from a spawner up here, and they just fall down. And the only other thing that was needed on the conveyor belts is this physics material. This might not be necessary depending on what you're using, but you can also set this physics material. I gave them a quite high friction to make it so that way the conveyor belt would slow down the objects in most directions besides the direction that the conveyor belt's pushing them. We wanted it to feel more like a rubber conveyor belt than an ice conveyor belt, for instance. So as you can see, once all of that is set up together, the objects will be able to move along the conveyor belt. And just for argument's sake, I'm going to change this conveyor belt here. We have the speed of it. I'm going to change this 50 times or five times higher to 50. And the conveyor speed, we're going to make this, let's say one. 
So we see that that one is moving much faster and you can visually see that the change of the velocity thanks to that adding force on that part is much higher. That'll do it for this video. I'm going to paste the code into a GitHub for you guys. I'll have the link in the description. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.